So we're here now, we're in like a high point in um, Old Town of Mombasa. So all this here, first of all you need to know is Mombasa used to be a small island. It used to be an island to get here, you would come here by ship back in the days. And all around us, all these white buildings on the coast, it's all part of Old Town. That side there, it's in Nyali, isn't it? Command. And then Komani, the bridge is there to get that connects that bridge was built recently, isn't it? Yeah. Um yeah, it's, but right here, right now where we are is Kenyageni, Fort Vordan is that way, and then further down is Fort Jesus. And if you see there is where the like the entrance is. There to where the entrance is, that's where I'm um, other side from um, Indian Ocean. So here is where all the trade is happening, they used to enter from here. This is the reason why they built Fort Jesus on the entrance into Mombasa. So this, the old town was the, was the first establishment or the first settlement. It was surrounded by city walls, typical in Swahili towns. Um, these, all these areas you see now, they were built later on. Um, the Borao community, they all live here, this area here. Um, yeah, so you see, if you walk through these alleyways, you just hear people speaking Chimini, Barawa. I mean, the Barawa people, they were here back in the days before, even 1991. There's three groups, they're categorized Bara people here with three groups. The first people who came, they were like the Hatimus, they came here a long time ago. They settled there as traders, they integrated. And then the, another group came in 1991 Civil War, they were fleeing persecution. And then the other group came later on, we came for investments. And I remember my, grand, my grandfather, may Allah have mercy on him, he used to tell us stories. He used to tell us stories about this place, like literally right there where that building is. If you go on the blue one. Yeah, I don't have time to get there, but if you go there, there's a little door, this passageway. In the morning, the tide, the tide is usually low, but now the tide is high. Um, they used to like bring the boats used to come here from Barawa. They'll come, come inside there. They used to get like Italian leathers, sh shoes, belts, everything. They used to import it from Barawa, bring it into here, and they used to like bring it in. They used to do it in the night. Someone used to stand there and wait for a boat to come and they, they know the boat is there, they like, use a little signal. And then in the 1991, my, 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 my grandfather lived there with Bakar Kulatain. And the story that he used to tell me was, during his brother was in Barawa, and they knew there, there, there was a war there, civil war, and the city was erupted, and the city was being invaded and occupied. And what he did was, he used to get on the phone, they used to have those old dialing phones back in the days. He used to get on the phone to him and tell him, send a boat and bring all the women and the children. So they used to wait in the night. In the daytime, because of what happened in the war, the Bara people, what, if you look at this, the map, there's only one entrance, one door to come into the city, and behind is the sea. So the people are actually trapped. If there's no boats, there's no coming out. That, what, that one entrance was a checkpoint. People used to fight. And then, um, so the boats, the Bajuni sailors used to come, get boats, you, used to, you have to pay them, whether you got gold, whatever it is, you should pay them and they'll bring you to, they, they settled, they first landed in the nearest town, so which is Lamu, Malindi, <laughs> They landed there, they settled. But some Barawa people, because we have, we have a big Barawa community here already existing, a lot of them came here, they're new people here, they can settle and integrate easily. So they came from there, they came in, in and this was, um, at that time, the Kenyan government knew what was going on, a lot of people coming in illegally, refugees. So they had to like um, send watchmen, boats, so watchmen, and they, they had stopped people from coming in. So it was quite difficult for people to come in. So now, people had to come in the night, it was pitch black and my grandfather used to stand literally on the window, there's a little hole there, he used to stand there and wait for the boat to come, you see a little flashlight or something, they'll wait all day because they know there's a boat coming full of people coming in and then the first, and then when they sent a boat, they came in the middle of the night, the boat was full of women and those boat, boat journeys, we did the episode of this anyway with Saeed, um, those boat journeys as you know it was harrowing experience, people died on a boat, 
people had diseases, they were vomiting, fainting. Because you can imagine sitting in the boat for hours and that the experience you get, especially in the sea. Anyway, they all came here, they got in there. And then I remember my mum even telling me how all these women came from where I had literally nothing on them, just their clothes and their children. They came in the room, they were all lined up on the bed, slept on the floor, sitting room, the whole way, they were all sleeping lined up. And that's how it is. And that's how we came in from, from this place here. This is um, Old Town and this is how we all settled. But that's, that's the, the story of Barawa as well. Some of the people that came in 1991. Anyway, I hope you, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed that in. And this is the Old Town of Mombasa. Back in the day, this place here used to be, um, the water was clean, isn't it, Ufra? Yeah. <coughs> Shit used to all, go all past. The, all the sewage from this town, the yeah, old town, comes. So the water's dirty now. Before it was yeah. really clear and before it was clear. You could see all types of fishes. Apparently, my auntie said swim. there was dolphins and everything. Yeah. People to swim, fishing. Yeah, but well, now, now it, it changed. Yeah. And that's the condition. All right, then. let's go. But our people here, because we had uh, families who were here before, the coming of refugees from Somalia after the war. And these ones, uh, yeah. we can't call them Barawis anymore. Yeah. No, the Hatimis and all this. These are like brothers because they intermarried with the indigenous mm -hmm. people. And uh, the closeness is too close because if you go down, there's a place called Kanyagen. Kanyagen, yeah. Then you know how close these families are. If some of them come, like where we're sitting, just outside, this is Ahmadi's house. That one is Ahmadi's house. This is a barao, but an indigenous barao of Mombasa. Except they're very close, they've been very close uh, uh, fathers of theirs, like uh, Taliani, uh, Nurmeta, you know? And their sons, like Baba Taliani, El Marhum, right now. A very prominent personality in football matters in Kenya. He went to being chairman of KFF, Kenya Football Federation. Mm. He's been uh, financial controller at Mombasa County. All these guys are Barawas. But to us, they are not Barawas, they are Swahilis. Yeah. For, the you know, for identification groups. purposes only, if you ask me, like you ask me, what about Barawas relationship here? Then we have them who have been here. That is before even Kenya became independent. We've been doing business, we've been marrying one another. You know? And right now if they come in, I'll tell you this is a bara, this is a bara, you'll be shocked. Yeah. But he looks like a bara. But he's not maybe he doesn't even know how to speak bara or to mean or eventually all our cultures are the same. So ينال بوصل أزكى المنايل بنادر قد جمعت أحلى الخصال